Hey guys, Kevin here. Well, I, it's raining out a little bit and uh, so I'm not going to get up on the roof right away. However, I've made some progress on the chicken coop behind me. And uh, I thought I'd show you what, we've, what I've done uh, recently. I've gotten all the rafters up and, uh, well, I'll just walk around and show you. So at this point, uh, there's uh, quite a bit of challenge getting getting the roof, uh, getting all the rafters set. I actually called in one of my friends uh, who is a builder, and uh, he helped me establish the angles for working with all these pitches and all. And uh, quite an elaborate roof for a chicken coop. <laughs> so let me see if I can get back here a little ways so we can see. Uh, typical roof when we when we look at this this is a gable end right here uh, over the area where the chickens uh, will be mainly housed uh, that's a 12 12 pitch meaning that uh, for going every 12 inches along horizontally or on a level line the roof raises 12 inches so that being a 12 12 pitch and this is a 612, so uh, this roof is a different pitch. And I wanted all the ridge, that top board, to be at the same level. And then we look at this hipped roof over here, the, where the roof is angled, uh, instead of going to a, a gable end. Uh, that actually is between a 9 and a 1012 pitch. So lots of different angles and quite challenging, especially one person up there doing it and it took me geez a full week to get all those uh, the angles correct and and get it on so just yesterday I got the this last section tied in quite a challenge uh, so we'll just take a walk around and see where we're at and I'll show you right over here at the end my last video I showed what we did with uh, how we build it. We build it from the structure on the inside first. Oh, right over here. The 2x6 walls and the insulation isn't between the, the studs, it's actually on the outside. So I've got three inches, two one and a half inch thickness sheets, uh, polyisocyanurate, rigid uh, um, insulation board attached to the outside of the 2x6s. Well the same thing is going to be done all the way around on the roof. Uh, so I don't have any of that thermal bridging and uh, having heat transfer or cold transfer through those walls. And that creates a bit of a challenge. So we'll go inside and go up to that section. This will be one of those attic access doors so I can get up into the area above when you're producing lots of food like we do in our gardens. Uh, storing the food and uh, storing the, the planting uh, areas. So we decided to above the coop area and greenhouse prep area uh, to create a little bit of a, of a drying, hanging and drying. Because right now all the garlics and uh, uh, in the workshop dry, uh, drying and uh, so this is a spot where we can do the drying of our herbs and and various uh, uh, vegetation so that it can be properly stored and prepped for uh, preserving over the winter months. So here we are we're in the section where it's basically a, a 9.8 inch rise for every 12 inches of run or running horizontal this is the area where it's uh, a 12 12 so it goes up a foot for every foot that it goes horizontally it gives us our 45 degree angles and what a challenge making sure that each one of these sections where the 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 depth of the rafter so we have a two by eight uh, rafter which is about seven and a half inches uh, deep uh, making sure that that 
that top edge is at the same level all the way around. Man, that was not easy, matching all these different angles. So those guys who frame these, uh, these roofs regularly, uh, kudos to them. And this area here is, this is the area that goes above the dehydrator. And uh, I wanted access to this area, so I had to step back. So instead of, uh, typically what would happen is this roof, that's, that is a mirror image of this roof, is filled all the way in and you sheathe it and then you put these other rafters on top of it. And I didn't want to do that, so I went ahead and uh, put a 2x12 down running in place of the sheathing blocked up the upper section so I opened up an area so I can get in here and work uh, if, if necessary because this this wall here is going to attach to the peak of the greenhouse where we're going to have all the heat come in and do a downdraft system for dehydrating food down below and it's going to be part of our, our cooling system for the greenhouse as well which hopefully in the future we'll go over all of that so that's it and we can look out from the roof here and see this is the greenhouse area i got a lot of the lumber inside now from this area this this first section down in here is the more tropical zone and that's our temperate zone where we're and all those pipes coming up are going to be for our raised beds in that area and from here we can probably go over and see Beehives, pond, uh, that's pond four, right in there, pond three is way over there, pond five, and then we get back to the almond forest over there, the first food forest is out by the beehives, and then we get into the hardwood maple forest for the uh, uh, maple syrup as well so that's about it it's going to take me some time and I really don't like heights after having fallen a couple of times and had some injuries but I'll be putting if there were more than just me the first step I would do is put a, a six mil a double layer of six mil vapor barrier directly over uh, these two by eights then I would be uh, well, if this were a house, I'd be putting 5 8 inch uh, drywall sheetrock on it first, and that would be a fire barrier. And uh, but for any other building, I'd be putting the vapor barrier on first, then the insulation. Then uh, I think I'm going to be doing a metal roof on this. Uh, I'll be putting the two by four purlings. So that's a stack of two by fours over there. So they'll go on as a structural support to uh, nail the uh, metal roofing on. So there's a couple layers that have got to go on it. But because I'm working by myself, I can work, put piece some of these sections of insulation all the way around on here from the inside, working within here instead of going up and down all the ways that I have to do. It's, it's uh, you know, it, all this climbing up and down the ladders over and over again. Uh, really does wear you out <laughs> so and the insulation when it's put on as you can see I don't know the seams all uh, don't come in alignment so you can't really put a double layer here and then work your way up and put another double layer there uh, with and adequately uh, make certain that you're not having the seams come in alignment so so that's what I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks is getting the insulation on this <coughs> and and batten that down with the two by fours and I'll be using six inch screws to do that uh, and uh, then once I have the two by fours on uh, then comes the uh, yes yes one of my helpers uh, then I'll be putting the metal roof on uh, most likely so that's about it for today. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick update on where I'm at with the chicken coop. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.